Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Another episode on the routing slip series today. And in this one, I'm gonna talk about how to retry an entire routing slip. So in the previous episode, we covered how to add retry to individual activities, much like you would a message consumer with the use message retry, and how do you, you know, recover from those transient faults in an activity without having to put you know, a retry catcher or something like that in the activity execute itself. And so what I wanted to cover today is, okay, I've tried to run the routing slip, it faulted, now I wanna do it again. And perhaps I wanna do it automatically, because I want automatic retry. I don't wanna necessarily have to force it. You know, With the API that we have, if we submit the registration again and it previously failed, it would restart it. Now I wanna use a retry inside the actual state machine itself to retry that routing slip. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the demo real quick and kind of show that. So normally when we register, if everything is fine, and let's say we just have a normal registration, we go in, we check the status of it, and by the time we go and check the status, we're already registered. And we can see that from the registered status that's returned. And if we get an error, we'll see the errors, and eventually we recover from them with that sample. But what I've added is a new way to say, okay, I want to like completely fail the routing slip and like fault entirely. I don't want to recover from retries. I just want it to not work at all. And so when I run it this way, by the time I get there to check the status of the registration, we can see that I'm in this new state waiting to retry. I haven't retried yet, but I'm waiting to. And if I keep asking for that status, Okay, now I'm registered. I didn't do anything. It automatically retried in the background by orchestrating those routing slip events inside the state machine. So this is a super fe cool feature. It, it lets you recover from, you know, kind of, you know, any sort of failure that's beyond just recovering an activity. You know, maybe, maybe a seat opened up, you know, maybe, it, maybe a position opened up in the race that the participant was able to join for. Um, Nonetheless, I'm gonna cover what changes I had to make to do that and kind of show you how you can build this into your own and how that state machine is tracking those failures and keeping track of retries. So I'm gonna start in the code in the state machine and I'm gonna to jump to kind of the middle first. Where's like the middle? So I've added some stuff here. So you can see I've added a couple of different things. I've added a new state waiting to retry and I've added a new schedule to schedule a message to for that retry delay because I don't want to retry immediately. I mean, I just tried and it failed. So I want to retry after some period of time. And so this uses two features of mass transit scheduling. And then I'm going to show you how it actually captures the state. Um, so I configure the retry delay expired event. And this event is super simple. It's literally just a record with a registration ID on it. Nothing super complex to it. All I'm doing is telling myself that I wanna do something at some point in the future. And I configure that schedule using the schedule bracket within the state machine. So this is all within the state machine that orchestrates the routing slip. It keeps track of a token knowing that the message was scheduled and this is just something that we store in the database. It's a nullable GUID and we use that to keep track of the fact that we have scheduled a message because if for some outside reason this saga was canceled or, or no longer valid, we could actually unschedule this notification. So that's something to keep in mind, but I'm not gonna cover that. Um, and then I can figure how to receive that event. I'm correlating that by the registration ID I didn't add that to my master event correlation list. I just sort of put it in here since it's just tied to this. Uh, I'm also not binding a topic or an exchange in RabbitMQ for this because I don't, I'm always gonna be sending it directly to myself. I don't wanna pollute the broker with that extra noise. So I don't even configure the consume topology on that. I know it's gonna be sent directly back to me. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the thing we did there. There were a couple other handlers that we put in here. The transition to suspended and the transition to suspended that's what happens when one of the routing slip events fails so what i did is i added a new handler and you can tell my advanced retry is super complicated here i have a retry count of five with a delay of 10 seconds you could put whatever 
rules you want as far as retry in here. You could even have a manually initiated retry if you wanted to have an event for that to say, hey, routing slip retry requested, and it would trigger it as well and unschedule the time-based one. Um, but basically what I'm saying is anytime I enter that suspended state, I'm gonna check and see if I've already retried and if my retry attempts are less than the retry count that I have, I'm gonna go ahead and schedule that retry delay expired event I just create it here with my correlation ID and I pass in that retry delay. I could calculate this based on the retry attempts if I wanted to, it doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna to transition to waiting to retry. And so while I'm in that waiting to retry event, if I receive that scheduled message, I'm gonna call this retry processing message, method. And what retry processing does is it does the same thing that initiate processing does up above or down below or wherever it was um to get that registration processed and so it passes all the information and to do this i actually had to add a few uh different fields that i wasn't previously tracking in the saga so i had to store that card number token because that was the only field i wasn't storing i also added a reason that retry attempt so that i could keep track of the retries that have happened previously so within this retry processing block, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna increment the retry attempt, and then I'm gonna publish this message. Now I actually add a header, and I don't use it, but I added it anyway, just to keep track of that retry attempt. And I think I do that for a reason, but I can't remember what it is right now. Um, but that's gonna go back to that process registration consumer, which is going to then rebuild the routing slip from scratch, set up a new itinerary, assign a new tracking number, and send it off. Same, same logic, same business logic in that consumer that built the routing slip the first time. I'm just rebuilding it a second time to try that whole routing slip again. So within the, there were a couple of other minor tweaks I had to do in there, but that's the biggest thing is I'm just, whenever I transition to that suspended state, I'm gonna try to retry, schedule that retry, and make that happen. So the, the other code remained unchanged. There was nothing to fix there. Uh, if we go and look into open telemetry and find the traces, I can actually see it's probably this 53 element trace if I was gonna gamble. And if you thought the previous call stacks on the last episode went deep, this one goes really deep. And I don't even know if there's a way to change this. Um, but you can actually see that you know, the process payment, process payment, execute process, registration set send. We actually went out and processed these messages. We did a send to ourself, which if we actually look in here, we can see, yeah, this is almost, <laughs> yeah, there's no way this is gonna be visible. But we can see that we sent that message to ourself for that delay. And if we actually look at the timeline for it, we can see that in some point in the future, we received that message. Maybe the table view would give us a little bit better uh, view here. Maybe it's the statistics table. Yeah, let's go by uh, operation name. Yeah, let's look there. So what we can see in here is that all of the initial stuff happened once. We actually did compensate the event registration for the first failed routing slip. So we can see that compensation here. So again, we never registered because the first routing slip faulted. And then everything else executed twice because we did actually go ahead and rebuild that routing slip and run it again. So kind of a little side thing I wanted to kind of cover because it was one of the questions that came up is how do I retry the whole thing? Um, and that's there. And this will be updated in the demo code on GitHub if you go to the link down below. So without any other things to discuss, I think that's gonna wrap up the routing slip series. I mean, if you have further questions, you're welcome to create a, a discussion on GitHub or drop into the Discord with just some random conversational stuff. Um, if it is kind of code based and you have a sample repo that's not working, I highly recommend a GitHub discussion for that because it keeps it there and you can link the repo there. Um, but I think that about covers everything I wanted to, to get out on routing slip. So hopefully you've enjoyed this series. Uh, slight teaser. The next series, which I'm going to start recording soon, is going to be on Kafka and how to use the Kafka writer. 
And I'm going to go into a number of different features on that as far as how to build and manage you know, topics. And in this particular series, I've actually already built the demo. We're going to be using Confluent Cloud instead of just running in Docker. We're going to be using MongoDB Atlas for the database storage. And it's going to be a whole app that kind of talks between a couple of different services, kind of how if you had like, a, well, I mean, a sneak peek, it's if you had multiple warehouses out there doing distribution type work, and you were reporting data back to kind of a centralized uh, inventory management or ERP type system, how you would build something that you using mass transit, Confluent Cloud and MongoDB Atlas. So that's gonna be starting off in January once this series is finished and uh, look forward to that. Beyond that, thanks for joining us. The best way to find out about new episodes is to subscribe to the channel. So definitely do that. If you liked this, like it, and we'll see you in the next series.